So I just watched Dave Ramsey's one hour YouTube video about is the housing market going to crash? And it is one hour. I, I think it's a really good video. Dave. If you have time, go ahead and watch the whole thing. But I'll try my best to summarize that within like seven minutes or so. Yeah, I like his energy, but he can be a little bit too loud for me. <laughs> and, and I'll save you from that. Um, so he's basically talking about 2006 mar market right there, the peak, and then 2022 is up there. This is his one of his main key points. Inventory is much lower than 2007. 2007, there were uh, 3.7 million homes for sale. And currently in 2022, there are only about 800,000 homes for sale. So it's way lower uh, when it comes to the supply of homes. And then he goes into like a brand new homes building too. In 2005, 2.07 million homes were, were built. In 2020, I believe is 1.38 million because of the supply shortages and everything. Lumber price, now it goes up, up and down, but now it's kind of like stabilized. People worry about the, the uh, foreclosure rates. In 2008, there were about 560,000, you know, at the peak, homes were foreclosed. Now in 2020, there were like pretty much none, none existing. Apparently there are people, uh, some who are not paying the, uh, the house mortgage pay payment, but the bank has not uh, been able to process those and but they're going to do that so it's kind of going up a little bit but when you hear the news they're going to talk about like oh foreclosure rate increased 500 percent that's that much if you look at the whole thing it's very small right now if it goes somewhere here it'd be very warning in my opinion but before we get there I think because many homeowners have a pretty decent home equity, they can just list and sell and go out and rent if they're really, really struggling. But um, I don't see that this is a problem yet. And he talks about just the general population. In 2008, the Gen X, it's my generation, we are actually a lower number when it comes to population. And the uh, millennials, the uh, Gen Zs, uh, there are five million more. There are more babies were born in the eighties, right? Uh, so yeah, um, so a lot more people, five five million more people who are in the mid thirties who are in the home buying age, basically. Less supply and more demand. That's pretty much his his whole talk here. Same thing with the number of households. About 12 million more households because of their more Gen Zs. You guys are just like dominating the world now. This one is kind of concerning one to me. The left top 10 is the top 10 cities in the country that most the investors bought. So for example, like Atlanta, Georgia, 33% of the homes were bought by investment groups. That's a problem. So one out of three, one out of four homes were bought up by like hedge funds and Wall Street. And the bottom seven, the Portland made like, I don't know, 10 or something. Still 11.5%, uh, that means pretty much like one out of 10 homes were bought by investment groups. Investment groups are going to keep those properties for a long time. And those homes are not gonna come back on the market because I think they realize that the real estate is more stable investment class, asset class. They're moving over here. Families are not able to buy their one home because of the hedge fund competition. This is a big problem in my opinion. He's basically pointing out, you know, sort of like a democratic cities and states with a sort of volatile politics and, and those issues, the downtown issues, whatnot. The investors are moving away from these cities and spending money here. Supply is low and demand is high. And this is his main point that the real estate market isn't going to crash. In fact, he is predicting for the next five years from 2022, 23, 24, 25, 26, five years, he's, he's predicting anywhere between three to 5% increase every year. Because of the supply and demand, 
the price isn't going down which does make sense to me and which i agree like 95 percent the five percent that i don't agree is this you know dave ramsey is known for very conservative money saving very frugal type of you know economical teaching method which i think is great so for example he talks about um not to spend more than 25 percent of your take-home pay uh, to house payment so that you don't become house poor which I believe that's a really good thing to do if you can afford to um, and he talks about put like 20% so you can avoid paying the, the PMI um, so you know save that up or at least 5 to 10% down payment again it's a great advice however the part that I don't agree is that if you haven't saved up that 20% and waiting five or seven more years to save up the 20% and not buying right now is going to hurt you financially, in my opinion. Because based on his prediction, the home price is going to go up 25%, which means your 20% right now has to be saved up additional 25% of 20%. Meaning you're like catch 22 every year. You save up and then the price go, go up, you know, every year. So you're on the sideline, not owning and not really realizing the equity gain. I think that's a loss in my opinion. So, I mean, obviously, if you saved up 20% by now, I agree with him 100%. But if you don't have that 20% saved, save, go ahead and use FHA. And, you know, he's, again, the other thing is, only do 15-year mortgage. It's really hard to do 15-year mortgage, in my opinion, especially when the inflation, everything's getting expensive for families raising kids. It's not easy. So it's still better to buy something as an earlier mortgage at FHA as so you can enjoy the equity gaining. I mean, in three years, you'll be probably get, gained 10 to 15% and you have a home that you lived in, you've been enjoying that home, right? So that's the only part that I disagree, but I have to agree everything else. You know, supply and demand is what drives the price. The other thing that I want to add on this talk is that, you know, hedge fund, those Wall Street people, they're pretty smart. I mean, they have like a group of people who are just studying the market so that they can know where to invest. And we just need to copy that. Meaning, if those people are buying up real estate, residential real estate, we as just regular consumer, we need to buy up residential real estate too to preserve our wealth or grow our wealth. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to give me a call. I, I specialize in like the Portland Metro in Oregon market. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. That will really help this video to reach more, more viewers and help more people hopefully so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time can you say hi